So this is where I work. This is where the um, things get posed. I have shelves full of materials, which are like still life items, uh, tools, uh, old bottles, just items we find around here in Maine in different shops and different yard sales. And, and um, I keep them here and then spend a lot of time arranging them and finding good arrangements that kind of brings out the quality and the beauty of the objects. So a lot of the paintings you'll see are of some of these simple objects, but rendered in a way that puts them in a light that brings out their beauty. This piece here is called um, Fortissimo. And it was a exhibition a while back, and the name of the exhibition was Misuse. So the idea was that you create a piece of artwork that somehow embodies the idea of misuse. So after some thought, I, um, I thought, wouldn't it be something to take a hammer and include an old piece of a clarinet? So that's, that's the bottom of the uh, hammer. And the idea is kind of comical and incongruous to think of using a beautiful, sensitive instrument as a hammer. So um, that idea came. I love the textures and the qualities of the metal and these beautiful, beautifully formed old tools against this demolished old can, and it just uh, was a nice way to frame that. That's a coin from Ireland, and that's a, this is like a bottle cap that you find on the sidewalk, you know. We're always picking these up. I like them when they get very circular. Uh, they, sometimes they get squashed at an angle. So this is a friend of mine, Walter, and um, in drawing this, what I did was draw the hairs very lightly and then drew between the hairs. So with a very hard pencil, that you can hardly even see it, I drew all the hairs and then drew between them. So the white of the hair is actually the white of the paper. This was a, one time my wife and I were walking in the middle of winter down on the beach in uh, Pemiquid Harbor near here. And blowing along the beach was this little piece of paper from the fishermen's co-op where the fishermen bring in the lobsters. And so um, we brought home the piece of paper and I, the same day I found this dried up crab claw on the beach. So that became the subject for that painting. See, this is the crab claw here. And what I do is make this from the dark background. Rembrandt did this a lot where he brought out, the, it's called chiaroscuro, where you bring out the light from the shadows. So that's kind of stiff oil paint. So see that kind of brings that out here. I've done it in kind of blue, but I could take a little bit of this white, like right in here, just kind of push that white right in there just to kind of subtly lift that surface and make it appear that the light is falling on that. Yeah, this is the table where a lot of ideas come from, by the way. This, um, a lot of objects, so I pose them on the table here and they're, um, There's this old book I found in a junk shop called um, Orphan's Refuge. And it was published in 1828. And having worked in orphanages, I also found a photograph of an old um, orphanage with children on the front porch. And then I assembled this with some things that a child might have. And the idea of the compass. Here's the compass. Um, the, the idea of these kids at a point in their lives wondering what direction they'll go in from here. That's why the compass is in there and a pencil stub and a whistle. This is another landscape uh, from Pennsylvania. The name of the uh, program was the Noah Ventura Children's Home in North Central Pennsylvania. And it was in a very remote, kind of a poor area of the state, very beautiful. It was home to about 25 boys and 25 girls who were um, wards of the state of Pennsylvania. And um, I went there in 1981 and stayed until 1985 and developed an art therapy program. 
as part of the therapy, some of the kids were very withdrawn, understandably because of a lot of their histories. And they'd come over to the craft room and the art room, and um, I'd give them paper and materials to work with, and they would sit and make these little tiny drawings on the, on the page. And, um, and they're very withdrawn, very quiet. So then we started giving them a little, just a little piece of paper, like that big. And they'd, they'd do their drawings. They were doing little drawings on the big page, so they do their little drawings. And then every day we'd give them pieces of paper a little bigger. And at the end of a week or two weeks, they would be filling the entire big page in. Uh, they hadn't noticed that the pieces got bigger and bigger. And not just because of that, I'm sure, but um, you'd notice their personalities begin to open up as well. You know, as they expressed themselves better on the paper, you found they were doing that more in their lives as well. So this was my walk to work every day. I walk right down this field, and it was a working farm as well as an orphanage. So. Um, in fact, this a tornado came through and blew away this corn crib. And some of the work, some of the wood that from that corn crib I took and I made this hammer dulcimer out of that wood. So, um, this is a 